Today, I want to talk about a common problem we have while buildings are being framed. The detail we have here on the screen shows a section drawing of a roof assembly framed with eye joist rafters. Here we have a little bit more information about the full buildup of this roof assembly. It's a vaulted ceiling with, that is framed with eye joists and the insulation is cellulose that is blown in between the joists and it is held in place by a smart vapor retarder membrane that works both as the vapor retarder netting and the air barrier of the system and that is installed on the underside of the rafters and because this is a plastic membrane that works as the air barrier we cannot really hang the drywall straight off of that so we have um, planned to have battens to separate the drywall from the smart vapor retarder membrane to, to maintain that continuous air barrier intact. Once we start looking at this assembly in 3D, this is what it looks like. And you see that we have intentionally looked at the detail where we have two eye joists that are paired next to each other, so they are assisted. And this is a detail that is hard to fill with insulation if you are blowing insulation uh, from the underside. The risk that we have is that we may end up with big open gaps in the insulation that allow heat to escape and um, air to move through, delivering uh, warm air and uh, moisture to the cold side of the assembly, which can lead to more condensation. So imagine this is a roof assembly. You can have your um, cold side is at the top and you have your warm air moving freely without any insulation slowing down the heat transfer there. And that is specifically evident when we start looking at this section view um, in the isotherm view uh, like we have here. Top side is, this is a roof, is cold, bottom side is warm, and you see that the heat flow is free to escape to the outside. The way we try to teach through these videos is that always try to think of the isotherms and try to follow your other isotherms, these black lines, through your detail and see if they find any gaps of your insulation or any metals, concrete, or masonry. And in this case, we have a big gap that is in between the eye joists that have been sistered. So switching back to the detail view, you see we have a big uh, gap. And this is more common than you think. It's not just about eye joist framing. This, is, this can hop, often happens at the framing between wall corners, or if you have an interior wall that meets an exterior walls, it becomes difficult to insulate behind those studs. And if you start looking at the flow direction, this is what it looks like. You see that um, you have your heat escaping through the highway of the open space of this gap, which is, it can be pretty bad depending on the level of efficiency you're trying to get with your project, as well, of course, on your climate. The problem of gaps in your insulation because of framing is actually not that hard to solve. It mostly comes down to communication and reviewing plans with your framers uh, before they actually start framing your house. So this, we have your um, gap that was left uh, uninsulated, but if you are proactive in the process and uh, provide them with some bat insulation, in this case, we simulated some mineral wool bats, that is something that your framer can install in between your framing as they go along. And then it becomes basically much better performance and much better quality at virtually no extra cost. Starting to look at the isotherms view, uh, this is now what the isotherms look like. Isotherms are much straighter. A straight isotherm is a happy isotherm. To compare that with the open gap, this is what the isotherm would look like. And back with the bat insulation, they become a lot more straight. So you see this makes a very big difference. And it's just about being proactive and understanding how the framing is coming together and provide the people on site with the knowledge um, about what they need to do and then just some insulation so that they can do that as they are framing the house. And looking at the flow direction, you see it's a lot less heat flow uh, with the gap being insulated 
as opposed to the uh, flow that we had if the gap was left uh, open. So again, th this is something that is very common. It is something that is easy to fix. It requires uh, reviewing the plans before you get into the framing stage and reviewing these goals with your framers so that you can um, provide them with uh, them with um, a the understanding what they need to do and then the material to uh, insulate uh, as they're going so you don't have any um, gaps left um, for your project for the insulation level in this case it was pretty simple we we just had some additional bed insulation but we have another example coming up uh, from a job site this is an example of an actual project of ours in Colorado. Uh, the, we see that we have two sistered eye joists installed next to each other, and that causes a, creates a cavity that would not be uh, reached by the insulation as we blow the insulation in between uh, the joists. So in this case, they drill through the uh, web of the joists and blue insulation in between the sister eye joist so we didn't have that dangerous gap uh, of the insulation so this is an actual example and it's a lot more common than you think it's not just about eye joist framing it's anytime the framing creates pockets and cavities that are difficult for the insulation uh, to reach Thank you for watching this. I, as always, appreciate you watching me geeking out about construction and building science. If you want to learn more about uh, Passive House and our training opportunities, this is a QR code that you can use to get to know us and what training opportunities we offer, as well as we have an, a free info session every first Thursday of the month. Um, if you have projects, if you have questions about training or building science, bring, please bring them along and we can go over them together.